So, um, Karen, I really appreciate your video response and um, definitely resonate with a lot of what you're saying. And I, I really agree that uh, what we're faced with now is uh, having to shift our uh, mental perspective, our state of mind, um, our psychological way of relating to nature, uh, nature being not just animals, plants, and air, and soil, and water, but uh, other human beings, we're faced with having to change the way we, we face the world, the, the way we live our lives, what we value, um, because uh, certain ways of living are quickly becoming obsolete uh, and impossible because they're, they're too expensive. Um, and they're expensive because the resources required uh, to supply them are limited. Growing increasingly so. Uh, so prices aren't going down. They're only going to increase. Um, if not exponentially, then rather close to it. So we're faced with having to, uh, you know, ask ourselves whether our technology is really as neutral as we as we used to think you know with the attitude that nature is an infinite supply of of resources when you take into consideration that technology is always uh, you know on the up and up it's always becoming more efficient and so forth so even if obviously earth isn't an infinite supply of stuff because it's you know one planet uh, our technology will just can you know continue to find more and more magical tricks about how to, you know, suck energy out of nature from nothing, that uh, we won't have to worry about the finite Earth. Um, and, you know, okay, I can't say, I can't prove that technology will never, I mean, we already have nuclear power, which pretty much, aside for the, from the fact that uh, when it goes wrong, it's devastating. Uh, it pretty much ha would supply us with a, a near infinite supply of energy. I mean, you know, the Earth is only going to be around for another five, maybe five billion years, but, you know, habitable maybe two or three billion more years. Um, so infinite is for this foreseeable future that our species could hope to maintain itself, you know, thousands, maybe a million or so years, but... You know, beyond that, I mean, I don't even, uh, what, what the hell is time? We don't even really know, so to speculate about a million years in the future is kind of, uh, doesn't make sense. I don't know where to start with that, but, um, you know, you also have to worry about where to put the nuclear waste, of course, which is a slightly larger problem even than the possibility of a meltdown. Um... But, you know, even if we started building nuclear power plants today, it'd take about 10 years for most of them to come online. And um, if uh, anything about all this peak oil speculation is true, and uh, 2005 turns out to be the peak of oil production on planet Earth, then um, 10 years isn't quick enough. And... Uh, we're going to be faced with larger economic upheavals before those plants can even be finished. And, you know, even if drilling uh, off the coast of Mississippi and Florida and Alabama generated enough oil to uh, help run our economy for a couple more years, and, you know, keep in mind that those new refineries aren't going to come online, you know, for at least another three or four or five years. Um, you know, we're already faced with something, and we know what the problems are going to be. The problems are going to be we're not going to be able to get food at the grocery store. We're not going to be able to drive our car 50 miles a day. Um, we're not going to be able to get electricity cheaply. Um, because, you know, when the demand of these other forms of energy starts to, starts to go up, so is the price. So... Less people are going to have it. 
and uh, you know we in the developed world are facing uh, an economic crisis in the sense that we're, you know we're kind of worried you know some people are losing their homes and uh, having to live on the street and stuff and their cars but we still eat but you know 40 countries and growing are having food riots um, many more countries are having to uh, you know increasingly uh, help to subsidize the food costs of their nation's people and it's driving up the debt of, of lots of countries you know of course the Western powers have the largest debts of the entire world um, So I think what we really need to be focusing on is is, is figuring out where we're going to get our food, and uh, I'm I'm kind of uh, happy to know, Karen, that San Francisco grew something like sixty percent of its food during World War, or not sixty percent of its food, but sixty percent of their vegetables, I guess, uh, during World War Two. Um, that gives me hope because communities, small cities, uh, that can do that. Uh, they can nearly or uh, even completely uh, sustain themselves internally. Food-wise, will be the ones that uh, struggle less, suffer le less, um, because uh, you know we've just gotten used to a lifestyle that, that was never uh, sustainable. I mean, and, and we're going to pay for it. So, you know, it sounds pessimistic, but I mean, if, you know, the sooner we accept it, the sooner we can prepare for it, and, uh, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to know what, what is going to happen or how bad it might be, but it's going to require that we change the way we, we live, obviously, I mean, even if it's a slight change, um, anything but, you know, having to accept, especially for an American, anything but un, uh, unending um, progress into the future and, and un, uh, unending economic development, having to accept something less than that will be shocking to a lot of uh, Americans, a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, capitalist-minded um, people and economies because in corporations uh, because it seems, um, you know, it's against, uh, it's, it's heresy, really. We're, 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 in, we're, we're underway, we're already underway of this next, uh, sort of religious reformation where, um, you know, the, the secular nation-state economy, uh, sort of deal is, um, you know, that took over from the church is sort of, now collapsing in upon itself and something new is, is trying to be born so uh, it's it's a stressful time but it's exciting it's just hard to plan isn't it <laughs> well I guess uh, Karen I haven't even watched those videos that you posted about the eco cities and so forth so I'm gonna watch those now so I can uh, prepare I guess uh, so, uh, anyways, thanks again for your video, and I'll see what I think of these, uh, I think one of them's a, one of them's a TED Talk, I want to watch that one, maybe I'll, uh, let you know what I think of that, but, uh, thanks, and keep telling us about these, uh, these people who are contributing to, uh, a better future for us, take it easy.